Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Dave here for Dave Outdoors and today I'm looking at the Nikau Palm as a source of food. Now Nikau Palms are found right throughout New Zealand, way up to the tip of the north, right down to as far south as Hokitika, Banks Peninsula, and they're in the tree line all the way up to where the tree line ends in the higher altitudes. In this area here, this is just a, a bushwalk path, laid out path that I'm on, they are all over the place. You can find them in the bush in singly, but usually you find them in uh, groves or groups of them. Right here we have a clump of three of them. Uh, one, two, and the big fellow right there. Now, the ones we're going to look for are these ones here that are just growing right out of the ground. There's no trunk yet. All you have are the fronds at ground level growing up like that. And what you look for is down inside. We'll go through a few of them in case you can't see this very well may not be able to see it, but right here, it's like a little spear sticking up, going right up like that. Brown or greenish, um, it's a shoot coming out of the center of the plant. You pull all the fronds away, push them out of the way, and that shoot comes up the center. Now the base of that shoot is where the food is. That one there is a little bit small, it would be very easy to get out, but it's um, a little bit small. Um, this guy here, Yeah, the shoot that's coming out of there has already separated into the fronds. That's what the shoot is. The shoot just comes up the center, and as it matures and grows older, the, as the, the uh, palm tree grows older, the shoot just separates into the individual fronds, and then the rest of the shoot continues up the center. You're always looking for the centerpiece down the base of it. To give you an idea of that, the age of these things, it takes about 20 to 50 years before the trunk start showing above ground level. So 20 to 50 years before you even see the first signs of a trunk. This guy here, ground level down there, trunks up to about there. So this is probably maybe, I don't know, just 70 to 80 years old. This guy here could be 20 to 30 years old. Who knows, it still hasn't shown the signs of a trunk yet. And this guy here, yeah, he's on his way to be fully grown. These things will live for 150 to 200 years. Um, and they grow to about 15 to 200, uh, 15 to uh, 20 meters tall. So that's roughly the same in yards, 15 to 20 yards tall. The thing is, once you take this center out, you know, there's a lot of life and a lot of time in one of these, one of these plants. Once you remove that shoot at whatever age the plant is, once you remove that shoot, the plant dies. So that, that shoot is necessary for the life of the plant. So it's not something you come and do just on a, a casual basis. We're going to eat one today because I'm in a grove where there is, there's literally thousands of them in this area. Um, but it's not something you do every time you go out in the bush for a walk. It definitely is survival food. I've heard people say in a survival situation, they would, as a last resort, because of the age of the palm, and because uh, the, the palm will die as a last resort, they'll use it as a survival food. Um, but me, I'm kind of thinking in a survival situation, if I've got one there, I just take it. There's thousands, thousands more will grow. Um, this one will die, but, you know, main thing is that I don't die. So there's no really, when it comes to survival, there's not really any sensibilities and um, sympathy for plants and trees. You know, there's plenty around. Take it and survive. In fact, in this area, if I was had to survive in this area, waiting for rescue or finding my way out, I would gather as many as I can so I had a food supply to cover me for when I'm in an area where I haven't got food. Or if I go down and injured and I'm in mobile, I've got food I'm carrying with me because I've prepared. But um, So anyway, this one is the one we're looking at. Uh, it's just growing out of the ground. That's, that's the one we want to harvest. These two here. They're too mature, it's going to be too hard to get that stalk out, and at the same time, um, they're too high up. So, there is one over there, and we'll go get that one out. The, uh, the weather's starting to close in here, so I'll uh, try and get it done before the rain hits my camera. Um, this is where I've already pulled a shoot out of. Now, growing in here, there's, I counted at least eight of these Nikau palm growing here, just in this small clump. There's only, it's no longer than, no wider than like a square meter. And there's like eight of them growing out of here. 
as you can see, we've got the good, strong, healthy ones like this fella, and then we have the weak ones here. The smaller ones, are, that's why I didn't feel too bad about pulling the heart out of the thing. That sounds quite bad, doesn't it? <laughs> that's why I didn't feel too bad about pulling the chute out of it. Is This one here is where I pulled the chute out of. It's already been eaten out by goats. You see how short these leaves are? Um, this one here is dying, so this plant probably just ain't going to make it. So I kind of helped it along a little bit in life. Just to give you an idea again of the fronds, uh, just to let you know that spiders love these, um, love these plants as well. So you want to clear away a patch um, and make sure you don't get a head full of those things when you're, when you're digging around inside. Here's our shoot right here. Hopefully you can see that. But it's not very tall. As you can see, it only comes up to about my chest height. And down here is the shoot I pulled out. This was actually sticking up like that from this plant. So there's no real sort of, sort of certain standard. You could find a big plant with a tiny shoot on it. You could find a little plant with a big shoot on it. I, I tend to go look for something that's about chest height or even taller. Um, anything more than that is quite hard to pull out. Now the way to get them out is you just ring them. They're, they're stuck in there good and tight. So ring it around like that and then just pull it. Just sort of, this guy's going to come out anyway, but you just lean your weight against it and just pull. Get a good grip on it and just pull it, pull it against your weight. Well, sorry, use your weight to pull against its grip. Then come forward, wiggle it around a little bit more, and then do the same. Just use your weight to pull it out, and it's going to pop out like that. So be prepared not to go over backwards. It literally will do that. It will just let go. So that's our fellow there, a little bit shredded because I've been wriggling around. But, okay, so as you can see, just the palm fronds, which is what the shoot is, they're just immature palm fronds. They haven't opened out yet and spread like that. Down at the very base of it, where it's all together, is just this white heart. Give it a clean off, get all the uh, food off it. Now, right at the top here, at the tips of the, the frond, the goats have been eating it. The whole thing is eaten off which is happening to these little ones here. They eat them down because of the nice fresh ones. Possums love to have a go at them as well. And, but down at the base, if the goats knew about this thing, they'd be digging a lot deeper because it's good food. Now to get it out, I'm kind of thinking, since it kills the plant anyway, again, I'll reiterate, necessary for your survival. So since it kills the plant anyway, I'm thinking just massacre this thing. Um, with these fronds, I would think just push them down and push them out of the way to expose as much of that carbohydrate um, shoot as you can. You need the sugar, you need the food, so expose as much of it as you can. If you've got a shovel or maybe even a knife, you might be able to dig around a little bit more to loosen more up and pull more out of the ground. I'll bring this closer to the camera. That's what you're looking at there. Now these can be eaten raw or cooked. Raw is fine. I've eaten, eaten one before. I don't go around eating these all the time, but I have eaten one before. This would be my second one. Breaks off really easy. Just I did something on the cabbage tree. And the consistency of cabbage is what the cabbage tree had. Um, this is very similar, it just breaks right off in your mouth. You just keep eating down until it becomes too sinewy or too fibrous. And then you're starting to eat the, uh, you're starting to eat the fronds itself, you can't eat it anymore. But, like I said, there's, I counted at least eight Nikau in this area, not all in this little bush right here. Eight individual plants, not all of them are going to live. If I had to, I would harvest most of them, maybe all of them. Okay, I've eaten down that far anyway, and we're starting to get into the fronds. Oh, I can still eat there. I need to pull it apart a little bit, it's starting to get fibrous. So, one little plant didn't even produce a meal. I wouldn't even call that a, a morning smoko or a lunch. <laughs> but there's eight of them in here. There's thousands in this area, literally thousands.
So that's the Nikau plant. There are berries and there are flowers, uh, berries and um, immature flowers that you can eat off this plant as well in different seasons. When those seasons roll around, I'll try and get out there quickly and um, find those guys as well. But that's the Nikau plant. Thanks for tuning in, guys.